Midway and Surreal Software push psychotic gore to the limits, and the action survival horror game The Suffering ties that bind. The sequel is rich in detail and packed with plenty of hardcore creature combat, but the gameplay and the level design seem to run out of fresh ideas before the game is over. The payoff may not be what you'd expect, but the uncomfortable feeling the game's subject matter delivers is tough to shake off. Yeah, my boys want straight up mother... You continue the role of Torque from The First Suffering, a fugitive convicted for allegedly murdering his family and continually tormented by visions of their death. You proud of me now, Dad? After escaping a high-security prison, he makes his way back to the mainland, back to where the nightmare began. In the infected streets of inner-city Baltimore, Torque visits locations from his past, searches for clues, and relives the horrors that occurred in those places. What the fuck, man? Oh, no. These nightmares help you realize the truth behind this incarceration. Your sole purpose is to hunt down and destroy a mysterious villain named Blackmore, Torque's one-time criminal mentor and leader of a small army that has a fetish for making your life a living hell. The story is disturbing enough but could really get random and confusing for someone who hasn't played the first game. Gee, how could you do this? And one less to get in your way. The levels are linear, for the most part. To move around obstacles and puzzles, you have to flip switches, turn valves, and move crates. The areas are really dark, so you need to use your flashlight often when searching for a way out of a tight space. The grimy streets, buildings, and back alleys seem diverse at the beginning of the game, but can get repetitive near the end. Each creature you fight has a disturbing appearance and backstory. Like the first suffering, Ties That Bind explains how each enemy was inspired. Those who died tragically in an abandoned building fire became the Arsonist, a monster engulfed in flames. The Trigger Man is a bullet-riddled corpse with eight legs, each equipped with an assault weapon. While their characteristics are explained, it's never made clear how they are created, or why the streets of Baltimore are full of Megadeth-style monsters. There are also human enemies to break up the eerie monster mashing, and it's refreshing to have some man-to-man -man gun battles every few levels. Their AI is somewhat intelligent, but these enemies are mostly practiced for the more ferocious villains. If you play this game alone with the lights off, you may find yourself looking over your shoulder from time to time. The voiceover performances are filled with emotion and appropriately disturbing. I sliced her top to bottom, so as to see her inner self. The environmental effects like fire, rain, and fog are used sparingly to enhance certain areas, and the lighting throughout is sharp. Some environments have shadows dark enough to keep the spooks hidden until you're right on top of them. Although the effects are impressive at times, it feels like little has been done to improve them over the first game. You might find yourself tempted to take the lives of innocent people you find on the streets. Depending on whether you spare them or kill them, your character's appearance and the ending of the game will be affected. It's nice to have some replay value, but the endings are sudden and unfulfilling. None of them will make you want to beat the game more than once. Alert. Security breach. Alert. One of the specimens has become unsecured. Support staff to take a facility. You will need a uniquely dire. Like the first game, The Suffering 2 gives you the option to switch between third and first person controls. This gives you an advantage when you use first person for close encounters against multiple enemies in small rooms, and third person when you're looking for clues and want to get a better idea of the scale of your environment. Third person is also helpful in a large area when you're getting attacked from all sides, but the camera can get stuck behind you in corners and tight spots. There's a variety of weapons from baseball bats to rocket launchers. You can hold two of them at a time while using all three types of throwing weapons. You'll need to change your arsenal because you never know when the difficulty level will jump unexpectedly. Certain weapons are more effective on some enemies and will do nothing to others except make them mad. These enemies can only be killed when you're in your creature state. After killing a certain amount of bad guys, you're given the power to change into a bloodthirsty monster. When your rage meter is full, you can transform and tear through enemies like wrapping paper. You can do a basic slash combo and a few special moves that will help you when you need to clear a room quickly. The creature can also be used to access certain areas. 
ties that bind has a demented attitude that will leave you feeling a bit awkward. Although it faithfully continues the story from the first suffering, gamers new to the series will feel left behind. The difficulty level is unbalanced, and the story, design, and gameplay all lose steam near the end. Still, blasting away each disfigured monster is a wonderful way to relieve the stress built up by the suffering's terrifying sounds and horrifying images.